Good morning, folks. Welcome back to the Philosophy for Philistines channel. I'm going to keep today short because I have a video that I wish you to watch. Um, as we're witnessing Canada's Tiananmen moment, Tiananmen moment, I have a very short thing I want to share with you about my thoughts about what's happening and why, and then I invite you to watch the video, the podcast attached to uh, to my podcast, which will be in the notes below. I am a committed anti-Marxist counter-revolutionary. I am convinced, based on the current travesty we are witnessing in the downtown core of Ottawa, that our government has declared war on the very foundations of constitutionally limited government. Cultural Marxism has invaded every institution which buttresses our democracy to ensure our freedoms. And since cultural Marxists are committed to furthering their revolution, a counter-revolution is an absolute necessity. The chief tool of the revolutionaries are words. Words that have been deconstructed to change their very meaning. This is the actual intended function of postmodern literary criticism, namely, to create the language needed to further the goals of the revolution. Since they have used language to deconstruct the grand narrative upon which our liberty under law is founded, the most obvious tool at our disposal to stop this assault on reason itself is language. We must reject their nomenclature, exposing what their deconstructions of words is, namely a concerted attempt to change the lens through which we both view and define the world around us. The world is far too complex a place for us to have to think about how we see it at every moment <laughs> and in every situation. We learn by imitating because we are social creatures. What critical theorists are doing is replacing how our culture has traditionally made sense of the multivariate complexity of reality to redefine it through a cultural Marxist lens. They are committed at every moment to furthering the process of their revolution by these means. And we, as a society, have sat idly by while they have taken the long march through our most precious institutions of education to corrupt our cultural elite, our political class, and our bureaucracy. How do I know this? Because I have read the academic papers written by the revolutionaries and listened to lectures given by experts whose area of expertise is cultural Marxist critical theory and postmodernism. People like Dr. Stephen Hicks and certainly Dr. Jordan B. Peterson, as well as Dr. Gad Saad and many others. Interestingly, of course, these folks are Canadian. Please watch the following. Since you have heard enough of my sermonizing for today, it is vital for those of you who are interested in understanding why we see our government waging war on the working class since cultural Marxism has replaced the old ideas of proletariat versus bourgeoisie with intersectional identity politics replete as it is with race baiting. Our greatest legal inheritance is English common law which demands that the law remain blind to our identity, our class, our religion, our group, our ethnicity, and our social status. Our legislators are committed to tearing apart our legal foundations to replace them with something that guarantees our darkest human impulses are to become law. So, this is part one with James Lindsay, the roots of new race-based Marxism gripping the West. It's an interview on American thought leaders with Jan Ye Kellek. The working class has become the enemy of Marxists. Critical race theory is a new form of Marxism based not on class, but on identity and race, says James Lindsay, founder of New Discourse, 
New Discourses and author of the new book, Race Marxism, The Truth About Critical Theory and Praxis. In this two-part deep dive interview, James Lindsay breaks down the roots of critical race theory, the logic of Herbert Marcuse's repressive tolerance, why powerful elites appear to have bought into woke ideology, the rise of social credit scoring system in America, and the strange fusion he now sees between fascism and communism. I do disagree with him on one count. It's not new. The Frankfurt School of Cultural Marxism has existed since the 1930s and since Hitler came to power. The sociologists and psychologists from the Frankfurt School fled to North America and went and taught in our universities and also helped to found the founding organization which became the CIA. They have taken the time to take the long march through our institutions. We need to examine the language they use and refuse to use it ourselves. We need to become the counter-revolutionaries needed to counter their ideological possession, which is literally destroying limited constitutional government. Here are some things to pray about on this Sunday, February 20th, 2022. God bless you folks. Have a wonderful Sunday.